In this class, we're going to be dealing with a lot of modulated signals. So it's important for us to then determine how the relationship works between the energy of a modulated signal and the original signal itself. So this is the modulated signal, and this is the original signal. The modulation just means we've multiplied it by a cosine with some frequency, f naught, so that the original signal uh, becomes spread out in the frequency domain now centered at f naught and um, minus f naught. Now, the original signal is typically going to have some bandwidth b. So the original signal, like my voice, contains some frequency band that's a lower frequency, uh, you know, something like 0 to 20 kilohertz. And the typical way to modulate is to choose a frequency such that the frequency is greater than or equal to the original bandwidth of your frequency. And what this is going to do is going to kind of spread out your uh, frequency components in the frequency domain so that your, uh, you, we don't get this overlapping. So just know that this is a uh, condition that's common that we're going to see, and you'll see why in just a moment. And so when you take the Fourier transform of the modulated signal, because of the cosine, you're going to introduce this one half term. And so you're going to have one half multiplied by your original signal, which has been uh, shifted to plus and minus F naught in the frequency domain. Now finding the energy spectral density of your modulated signal can be done uh, performing this integral just like we've seen before. And this integral, because your uh, modulated signal has this one half term, that one half term goes in here and there's a square and that's going to introduce a one quarter term in your energy spectral density of the modulated function. So now you have this one quarter term that's being multiplied by the components of your original signal in the frequency domain. So then uh, we have this one quarter term and if we did select, if we were smart and we selected our frequency greater than the bandwidth, the reason that we want to do this is because now there's shifted, there's no overlap between the original signal bandwidth, which is low, and the uh, modulated signal, which has these shifted frequency bands. And because there's no overlap, this means that we can separate this out. And so instead of having both of these terms under the same square, we can actually put them in their own square since they've been shifted. And note that we're still dealing with this quarter power term for our energy spectral density. Now, when we do this, uh, we can then break this into two integrals because we've selected a smart uh, frequency, F naught. And this means that we can now relate the energy spectral density of our modulated signal to the energy spectral density of the original signal. So the energy spectral density of the modulated signal is one quarter times this uh, upper F naught modulated part of the original signal plus one quarter times the minus F naught part of the original signal. Now, <clears throat> this means that we have this relationship where we have the original signal, which has some energy spectral density, and then the modulated signal has these two one quarter terms. And so you're probably already getting the feeling, right, that our, the energy spectral density of the modulated signal is going to be less than the energy spectral density of the original signal. And that's due to that one, one half term that comes in uh, due to the uh, Fourier transform of that cosine wave. Now let's take a look at this uh, in a graphical form. So if you have the original spectrum of your time domain signal, it contains these baseband signals from minus b to b. And if you are to take the energy spectral density of that, you'll see that it has some height k and the, the bands that it contains are from minus b to b. Now comparing the energy spectral density of your original signal to the spectrum of the modulated signal, you'll see that because of this one half term, the height goes from k down to one half k. So it doesn't matter what it is, but just know that uh, in the frequency domain, we've already reduced that height by one half, um, and it's been shifted to the plus and minus f naught. Now, the energy spectral density, which is what we're interested in for now, is that we have this energy spectral density of the original time domain signal and the modulated time domain signal. And the difference between the two is that the energy spectral density of the modulated signal has now gone all the way down from k down to one quarter k of the ESD of the original signal. So you have one quarter 
of the original signal spectral density plus one quarter. So in total, this is uh, going to be half because you have two of these, right? You have the plus and minus F naught, each at a quarter power. And so because of this, uh, looking at the, the relationship between these two, we know that the energy spectral density of the modulated signal is less than the energy spectral density of the original signal. And based on this uh, squaring and that one half term that was introduced by the modulation of the cosine, we can say that the energy of the modulated signal is equal to one half the energy of the original signal, so long as you select the, this smart modulation, F naught, so that you have a uh, F naught that's greater than your original bandwidth, and you have this uh, separation of frequency here so that you can uh, change these two terms, and then again, break this apart so that you have one quarter plus one quarter, which shows us that we have this one half relationship between the energy of the modulated signal uh, the energy of the original signal is one half of it, of the the modulated signal. So the modulated signal has less energy than the original signal. 